Good day, class. So for this particular set of slides, we're going to learn about areas of plane region. This is just one of the many applications of the topic of definite integral. So for this time, you need to know how to be able to plot the graph, uh, determine the intersection of the graph and lines or the intersection of a graph on a particular axis. And then upon knowing the area, concerned, then you'll be able to determine the area of such a plane region using the concept of definite integral. So let's start with the learning objectives for this topic. So at the end of the topic, you are expected to be able to find the area between a curve, the x-axis, and two given ordinates. Or you are also to determine the area between a curve and the x-axis where the ordinates are given by the points where the curve crosses the axis. Then you are also to determine the area between two curves. So these are actually the three simple objectives that you are to be able to achieve at the end of the discussion or after listening to the discussion. Now let's have a review on the definite integral. So we know that when we want to approximate the area of a particular integral representing a non-elementary function, we use what we call the Riemann's sum. So let f, the function, be a continuous a function on the interval a to b. Then the Riemann's sum for the function on the interval a to b approaches the real number limit i as n approaches infinity. So on the topic of numerical integration, we know that n is dependent of the number of uh, divisions that you want your particular area to be divided on. And then you have to take the sum of all those number of divided areas. So that's the Riemann sum. So this limit i of the Riemann sum for the function on the interval a to b is called the definite integral. And this is how we write it. And this is how we write even the non-elementary integral in which we approximate the value of using the two uh, methods discussed in the previous slide, which is uh, trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule. So both rules actually will compensate or will approximate the integral, the definite integral specifically like this one, where the function is said to be non-elementary, meaning it's not easy. It's not easy to integrate. And as such, the techniques that were uh, discussed with you in midterm on how to evaluate integrals are actually all elementary integrals. So it is said to be non-elementary when those te techniques will not anymore be uh, appropriate or useful. So the definite integral that we have here actually represents the limit of i, which is the Riemann sum for our function on the interval or on the limit a to b. So the integrand in the set exp expression is your function of x. The lower limit is a and the upper limit is b. So this is our definite integral and this is the same expression that you will be seeing in a little while when we determine the area represented by this particular integral. Now, let's go to areas under functions. So definite integrals are used to find the area between a function and the x-axis. So the limits are the points at the start and end of the area that you have predetermined. And if the curve is not drawn for you, it is often a good idea to sketch it properly or correctly to give you an idea of what is it really that you're looking for or the specific area that you're trying to account for or calculate for. So it's important that you will be able to have a clear understanding of curve plotting that were taught to you in your analytic geometry. That way you'll be able to see how your curve looks like and how it the area also under the said curve based on the limits specified would look like. So let's start our discussion on the areas under function by starting with this very simple uh, illustration. So let's say, for example, you're given a curve and that curve 
is given by the equation y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 11. And you are to integrate the area under this curve and the x-axis on the interval 1. So this is 1 here and this is 4. Okay, so very simple. What you're going to do since you are after the area under this curve and on the said interval uh, 1 to 4 and the x-axis, then you have to write your integral in this manner. So what we do actually, so let me annotate. We select a what we call a deferential element called the deferential element or the deferential L, uh, uh, sorry area so it's actually supposed to be a vertical strip that is perpendicular so let me erase what i have drawn because it, it doesn't look vertical it's a slanting line it has to be perpendicular to this particular line uh, y equal to zero so let me draw that line here. So let's say we'll have a vertical strip here. This vertical strip is chosen to be perpendicular to the x-axis or this is the line y equal to zero, which I have mentioned. So we want to know this area, the one that is shaded in yellow. So since your strip, your vertical strip is perpendicular to the x-axis or to the line y equal to zero, then this particular strip will have a width of dx and a length of y. So it's now y dx. So when you write the integral representing this area, so the area the yellow shaded region will be y dx. And since it's stated here that the interval that you are to integrate and determine the area should be from 1 to 4, because this is understood to be 0, this is by the way 2 and this is 3, then your limits of integration would also be from 1 to 4. And what you could see happening here is that you simply substitute what is this y. The y actually that you have here, which is the length of this strip, is actually the y of the curve. This y is actually the y of the curve minus the y of the x axis. And that happens to be uh, this is y equal to zero. So when you want this particular length of the vertical strip, that would be the y of the curve minus the y of the x-axis, which is just zero. So as you can see here, what you have simply written is just the y of the curve. What's the y of the curve? That's this equation of the curve, which is x squared minus 6x plus 11. And the rest is just a matter of a very simple use of the power rule. So you integrate using power rule and you substitute the limits 1 to 4. So your limits here, since we're after the area of this region, this yellow region under this curve and the x-axis on the designated interval 1 to 4, your units will be square units. Okay, so or we write 9 square units. So this one is a very example on how you determine the area between a curve and the x-axis with a designated limit. Or shall we say that limit is also your limit of integration. Now let me clear what we have here. And let's proceed on the next example. Now for our next example, it's the same thing. You have this curve. You have the x-axis. And this time, you are to determine the area of the yellow region from x equal to negative 1, this is negative 1, this is 0, and this is 1. So just like what we have done in the first example, you, you choose a vertical strip. You choose a vertical strip because it's said to be perpendicular 
said to be perpendicular to the x-axis. That's normally what we do. If it's the area under the curve, the x-axis, and the designated interval, we choose the vertical element because it's perpendicular to the x-axis. So again, this is dx. It's being parallel to the x-axis, and this is y. So the width is dx. The length is y for your um, element that you have drawn. So the area will be equal to just like what we have done in the previous example, y dx. Because we know if we have a rectangle for this, the area is y dx. Your limit of integration will be the designated limit here, which is negative 1 or the designated interval in which you are to determine the area to 1. Now, what is this y? It's the same as the previous example. That would be the y of the curve minus the y of the x-axis, which is just 0. So as you can see here, you have x cubed minus x plus 3. So what is the y of the curve? This is the y of your curve. Then you use the appropriate rule here to integrate the expression and substitute the limit. So if you substitute the limits, negative 1 to 1, on this integrated expression, which is x to the fourth over 4 minus x squared over 2 plus 3x, you will have this as your answer. By the way, this negative 1 should be here and this one should be here. So just change. Uh, the, it is just a mistype on the way the limits of your integration should be placed. So you substitute the upper limit first. So that would be the positive 1. And then the lower limit, which is the negative 1. So you have here, uh, if you substitute negative 1 for the lower limit, this would be still positive 1, and this would still be positive 1, and you will have this one as negative 3 already because the x here is negative 1. So the answer or the area of this yellow shaded region is 6 square units. So very simple because... The area that we want to determine here is just the area between a given curve and the x-axis with a specified, uh, on the specified interval. Okay, so let's proceed to more examples. So we'll go to example number three. What about if uh, you have curves that go below the x-axis. So this is something that you should be very careful because areas under the x-axis, under a curve, but under the x-axis is normally when computed will be a negative. So you must calculate where the function cross or crosses the x-axis. You calculate the area above and below the x-axis separately. The total sum is the sum of the two parts. So you don't get just one area, but rather you separate the area below and above, and they take the sum of the two areas. Now, to illustrate that clearly, let's have this particular illustration. So you have this portion here, the blue portion, which is positive because it's above the x-axis. And you have the A portion, which is negative because it's below the x-axis. But in this particular scenario, you are to both, you are required to get the total area between the x-axis and the given curve given by, by the equation y being equal to the function of x. So if your f of x is positive for some values of x on the interval a to b, and negative for others, which is in this case, so you have just one interval that is a to b, but in this case, you have a portion which is negative and you have a portion which is positive. Then the definite integral would be represented by this particular expression. Now, it represents the cumulative sum or simply the sum of the signed areas between the graph of f of x and the x-axis where areas above are positive and areas below are negative. So there is no such thing as a negative area. So you will make the negative area its negative. So what is happening here now is that the area of the said curve and the x-axis would now be the negative of this area, which is negative, to make it positive. So we write a negative sign 
on the computed area which lies below the x-axis because if it's purely uh, processed using mathematics or that's the integra integral calculus, the answer would be negative. And to make it positive, we make it the negative of it. So this is now positive and then you add to it the positive area which is the blue shaded region here. Then that would give you the correct total of areas between the x-axis in this particular curve which is y equal to the function of x. Now, this particular example will illuminate it further. So let's say this curve that we have here is given by this equation already in factored form, x times the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 1. You are after the area between the curve, this violet curve or lavender curve, and the x-axis. So you have two areas actually. Okay, you have this area A and you have this area B. As you can see when computed, purely computed, the B area since it's below the x-axis, it would be negative. So when we account for it, we have to write it's negative. That way it will become positive. So as you can see here, just like what we have done in the first two examples, we are to choose, so we are to write a vertical element in this case because we still have the area under the curve and the x-axis to determine here. So this is still dx and this is still y. Now you have your limits as 2, this is negative 2, this is negative 1, this is 0, this is one, okay? Now, you may ask how did you know or how were you able to determine these points of intersection of this curve on the x-axis? So we know that the x-axis is y equal to zero if it's written in the form of an equation. The x-axis is y equal to zero. It's where y is said to be equal to zero. So when you set this y equal to 0, you will get to know the values of the x's or the points on the x-axis where your curve is going to intersect. So that's the very purpose why initially you could see here that the equation of the curve is already in factored form. Why is that? Because if you set this to 0, automatically you will have this on the right side. And if you individually equate the, fun the factors here on the right side of the equation to zero, you will have three values of x. Zero for this, negative two for this, and one for this because it's just like you will have x equated to zero, x plus two equated to zero, and x minus one equated to zero. It's because zero is equal to these three factors. Okay, so your point of intersection or your points of intersection on the x-axis for your curve would be negative 2, 0, and 1. So that's how you knew the points of intersection. You set y equal to 0. And since you already correctly determined the points of intersection, then you would know using the uh, two separate integrals what would be the appropriate limits. So if you could see here, that your integral of x cubed plus x squared minus 2x, which is actually to be uh, generally on the interval negative 2 to 1. So the entire thing that is from negative 2 from here to here, because the area, the, the yellow shaded area is from negative 2 to 1. So that's how you're going to write. But this is not how you're going to write it purely because we have two sets of uh, curves here. So you have to substitute in the two sets of limits, negative 2 to 0, that's for area A, and 0 to 1 for area B. You have the same equation. Okay, you have the same equation. However, however, for your two equations, you will have different limits. So you have negative 2 and to 0 and 0 to 1. Now to illustrate that, let us go to our whiteboard and the new share for you to understand what I mean.
So the area for your curve then would be area A dx plus area B dx. Okay, or actually simply area A plus area B. So let me just erase this because you haven't yet integrated. So the area that we're talking about is equal to A plus B. Now the area under A will have limits negative 2 to 0 and you will have Y dx for that plus you will have 0 to 1 Y dx for the other one. So you have two areas the one which will be using limits negative, zero, negative 2 to 0 and the other one would be 0 to 1. Let me go back to what we have on our slide. Okay, This is from negative 2 to 0 and this is 0 to 1. So these are the two areas that we would like to account. And this is the y equation that we will be using. x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. So we'll go back to our whiteboard. So this one here would be negative 2, 0. So you have x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. Now this is your y. And since it's also the, the y equal to 0 or the x-axis that is in the bottom because we're after the area of the first uh yellow region so this would be dx for the second one if you notice for the second one you will have a negative y dx so let me just write first your uh, limits here zero to one your negative y dx will be this same equation but it would be its negative so let me erase what i have here And I'll write the negative of all of this. So it would be like negative x cubed minus x squared plus 2x. Okay? Dx. So the negative of our y. Why is it negative? So I'll place here negative. It's because it's below the x-axis. So let's go back to our illustration. So x cubed plus x squared minus 2x for this positive area. This one is negative, so negative of this, okay? And notice that we also have a different set of unit, uh, limits for our two areas, A and B. Okay, so you can see this one. Now, this one is still your Y, but it's negative. It's like, why well, is this negative Y? It's just like you will have for this, the x-axis minus the y of the curve. And what is the x-axis? That would be 0 minus the y of the curve. The 0 minus the y of the curve is this equation here because this is your curve actually. Okay, so that explains why you have a negative. Then you do your usual integration. So you will have here x to the fourth over 4 plus x cubed over 3 minus x squared your limit is negative 2 to 0. For this one, you will have x to the 4th over 4 minus x cubed over 3 plus x squared, this time having limit 0 to 1. Then you substitute. So this is, if you substitute 0, all of this will be 0. If you substitute negative 2, this would be 2, 4, 8, 16 over 4, and that would be 4. This would be negative 8 over 3. And this would be uh, x squared. So this would be minus 4. Now, since this is 0 initially and this is already the lower limit, then it's to be a minus. So this is negative. Okay. If we have this one, we have minus. So if you substitute the one, you have 1 fourth minus 1 third uh, plus 1. If you substitute the lower limit 0, it will be anyhow, all of it will be um, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we add. So if you add this, uh, this one and this will cancel each other. 
So negative of negative becomes positive. So that would be 8 over 3. And for this one, this will be uh, 1 fourth. And then we have your 1 fourth is, by the way, negative. So negative 1 fourth. Then you have 1 third. And then you have 1. So your answer is 5 over 12. This one is 5 over 12. If you take the sum of the two, that would give you 37 over 12. Or that would be, if you will have a 3, that would be 36. So you have this one as 3 over 1, or rather 3 and 1 over 12, because this is... 36 plus 1, that would be 37 over 12. So this is the answer to the area that we're looking for in which one of the two areas lies below the x-axis. So let's go back to our slide and check whether we have the same answer. So it should be 3 and 1 over 12. So this area being positive and this area being negative. So you make or you write the negative of the computed negative area of this one to make it a positive area, okay? Let's have example number four, find the area between the curve. So this is your curve. So this is your curve uh, y equal to x times x minus three. And the ordinates, or the interval in which you are to determine the area is from zero. So this is zero and this is five. So actually the area that you're after is this A area and this B area. The A area is below the x-axis. The B area is above the x-axis. So if you set your y equal to zero, just like what we have done in the previous example here in the equation of the curve, if you set y equal to zero, you will have this equation. And just like example number three, you would know that the points of intersection of your curve, x times x minus three with the x-axis will be zero. And if this one is equated to zero, that would be three. So the points of intersection would be this, the curve crosses the origin and x equal to three. As computed, on the equation of the curve in which the y, but y is set or equated to zero. So thus the curve cuts the x-axis at the points zero and three. So these are the points in which the curve cuts the x-axis. This one is a designated or a specified limit to the area that you will determine. So the meaning, the area that you will determine between the x-axis and the curve would only be starting from zero up to five. So it would be until here, okay? So if we continue, let's clear the drawings. You will have two sets of areas to determine. So that would be the area from zero to three, let's go back. So this is the area from zero to three and the area three to five. Okay, three to five. The area from zero to three will be x squared minus three x dx. How was it? So this one was expanded by the way. So before you have written it in factored form, that way you can determine the points of intersection of your curve with the x-axis. But after that, when you do already integration, you have to have this expanded. So this is actually x squared minus 3x. So this area here that we have is actually a negative area. But you have to make it positive because this area is under the x-axis. So if we will move on and create the drawing, so take note that this is the equation of our curve. Uh, so this is it. So you have x squared minus 3x. You use power rule. You will have x cubed over 3. And you will have 3x squared over 2 for the second term from 0 to 3. 
So the computed area after you substitute the limit 0 to 3 will be negative. So what you do when you account for the total area, you have to make it positive. Okay, the other area is as is. That's on the limit 3 to 5. It's positive because it's above the x-axis. So you will actually be getting the same integral, but you will be substituting different limits, okay? Because the designated areas have different limits or intervals. So if you substitute the values, you will have 8 and 2 thirds. So the area under the said curve on the designated interval 0 to 5 will be the sum of these two, where this negative area is made positive. So the total area is 13 and 1, 6. Okay? So pretty much the same as sample problem number 3. Now let's go to finding the area between two functions. So the previous four examples limits the area between a curve and the x-axis and a specified interval or an specified interval or limit. So if it's not specified, all you have to do is just determine first the points of intersection of your curve with the x-axis. Why? Because we want to determine the area between your curve and the x-axis. Now, what about if we have two curves or a curve and a line, and then we are to determine the area between these two? So it's just like saying, find the area between two functions. One can be a curve, one can be a line, or both can be curves. So let's have this one. So this is finding the remaining area. So the technique that you will be doing here is you find the remaining area when the smaller area is subtracted from the bigger area. So that's one technique that could be used. Integrate, substitute in the limits, then find the difference between the two. It's because we're talking about the area between two functions. So get the big area, subtract the small area, and that's the area in between the two functions that we're talking about. Now let's have a simple example here. You have the curve x squared minus 3x plus 5. So this is the curve that we're talking about. And the line 2x plus 1. You are after this area, the area, the yellow shaded area. So when you determine the area between two functions here, one being a line and the other one being a curve, the technique that was suggested is that you get the area of the big, you get first the big area, rather, and then subtract the smaller area. So to get this shaded Portions, normally what we do is uh, draw a vertical element that would be perpendicular to the x-axis. Now you have the equation of the, the line here, which is 2x plus 1, and you have the equation of the curve, which is x squared minus 3x plus 5. So what you did is you have this as the dx, and this is your y. Your dx will be of course, require the limit on the uh, x-axis or the ordinates that is because dx tells you how many elements will you have along the x-axis to complete this yellow shaded portion. So we will be starting with 1 in this case until 4. Okay. Now, it says here get the area, the largest area, and subtract the smallest area. It's the same as this one. So if this is your strip, that would be the y of the upper function minus the y of the lower function. What's the y, what's the y of the upper function? That's your line because your line is above the curve. So that's 2x plus 1 minus the, the y of the lower function. The lower function is your curve, x squared minus 2x plus 5. That's it. You substitute the limits and this is the now, the area that we're... Uh, after the area between these two function line and the curve. Now, based on the technique that was mentioned, wherein you get the area, the largest area minus the smallest area, that would mean that if you're after this, you get the area of the trapezoid. This is the area of the trapezoid and subtract this area, this one. Uh, let, let me use a different color and do you have here okay. okay 
It's like this. All this. It's like you are after this area here. So the area of the trapezoid minus this area will give you the area, the small area, as dictated by the technique. But it's simply done by simply subtracting the upper function y and subtract from it the lower function y, this is still your dx. This is the one that we have done here. So it's just like you have solved for the area, the bigger area minus the smaller area to give you this yellow shaded area. And the answer would be 4.5 square units. Okay, so bigger area minus smaller area, or if you have designated already the strip, and since you have the x-axis here, which is set to on the interval 1 to 4, then place an element that is perpendicular to the designated limit on the x-axis. So it's so easy actually to determine what should be your differential element. I call this as the differential element or the strip. If the specified limit is an x limit, it should be a dx. If the if the specified limit is on the y, like here until here, then it should be a dy. Then the length would be a, or rather a dy for the width and for the length or for the, yes, for the width and for the length, you have the y instead of the x instead of a y. What I'm trying to say is this. Uh, let's say for example, in this same slide that will illustrate let's say for example uh the designated limit is not x but rather let's say this one this is uh three and this one is what's this seven eight nine it's three to nine so in that case you will have a three to nine and since three and nine this is one and this one this is just an example uh, and since three and nine are y coordinates then this should be a dy and this should be an x because the interval that was stated is y coordinates but if the interval that is stated is x just like in our examples then you will have to have in this case one to four this is y and it's dx so if this is your scenario but in this case, that will not be true and that should not be the vertical element, element that you will use. You will have this differential element. It's horizontal. It's not vertical. If it's horizontal in this case, I'd like to, to, uh, to emphasize this. If you choose the horizontal element in this case, that would be wrong. Because in this portion here, class, in this portion, uh, below rather this portion here, meaning here, so the loam here, you will have your curve and your curve. Whereas if you have in this portion, you have the line and the curve. You have in here, you have the line and the curve, the line and the curve. Well, this one is a curve and a curve. There will be a specific example later where that particular scenario will happen. You will have to use a different approach for that. So in this particular problem, what is appropriate to use is the vertical element. It should be the vertical element that you should be using, not the horizontal element. Because if you use the vertical element in this case, <clears throat> if you use the vertical element in this case, you will have the same uniform element as you move from any point in your uh, area. So if I have here, it would be the same. If I will choose here, it would be the same would be line to curve, line to curve, line to curve. It's a different thing if I use a horizontal thing because here, as I've said a while ago, you will have a curve and a curve. Well, in here you have a line and a curve. So it will not be true. So when you have when you have such a scenario, it is suggested that, that you choose an element, you choose an element that will be true to your entire area. If not, you have to, it will be illustrated in a little while, you have to divide the said area. So in this case, that would be okay. So you have a y and a dx on the interval one to four. 
because the designated interval is an x or our x coordinates, then it should be a dx. If the designated interval is a y, it should be a dy multiplied to an x. So this is our example of finding areas between two functions. So let me clear the, the markings here and let's go to the next uh, example. Now, calculate the area of the segment. The segment that we're after is this one. This is the segment that we're after. So calculate the area of the segment. Where was that? Cut from the curve. So this is your curve by the line y equal to x. So this is your line y equal to x, and this is your curve. Okay? Now, Sketching both the curves on the same axis and setting y equal to zero, make your curve, your curve x times 3 minus x, cut through the x-axis on the point zero and three. So the curve cuts the x-axis on the point zero and three. What does this mean? Uh, let me annotate. So if we will set zero here for our y, it means that we will determine the points of intersection of this curve x times p minus x on the x-axis. So its point of intersection as illustrated here is 0 and 3. So you have a 0 here and you have a 3 here. So this curve crosses the x-axis on 0 and 3. Okay, the same procedure as illustrated in the previous example, you will have to set this to 0 and the factored form of the equation the fa in the factored form of the equation, the factors will be equated to zero to get the points of intersection. So these are your points of intersection. Let me clear the markings. Okay, we'll proceed. So the line y equal to x goes to the origin and meets the curve uh, y being equal to x times the quantity 3 minus x at the point P. So this line and the curve, meets each, uh, they meet each other or they intersect each other on zero and this point P. At P, the y-coordinates of both curves are said to be equal. What does it mean? That at this point of intersection of your line y equal to x and this curve y equal to x times the quantity 3 minus x, at this point P, since they met, they will have the same y's. So since they have the same y, you're right, they, this one is the same y, this one is the same y. They have all the same y's, the curve and the line on point P. Okay, they have rather the same y value. So what we do, we equate the two. So you see here, the two being equated. Now what's the purpose of this? So you will see the points of intersection this time of your curve. Uh, x times 3 minus x, quantity 3 minus x, and y equal to 3. So a while ago, we determined the point of intersection of the curve only on the x-axis, and that's 0 and 3. But the point of intersection of the curve and the line would be 0 and 2. Where was it taken? From here. Okay? Now, so that you will have now two regions to look into. So you have this region and this region. But nonetheless, the problem is only asking to determine this one. So then, since you're only going to determine this one, it's very easy. So all you have to do is make a strip that is perpendicular. Why perpendicular? Because you already have this set interval for this area that the x would only be from 0 to 2, then the appropriate strip is vertical and it should be a dx and you should have a y. So if your integral will be written, that would be the integral from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2, and then you will have um, y dx. y being the length of this vertical strip and dx its width. Now, what is that y specifically? So you have 0 to 2, the y of the curve, which is, if you'll have it expanded, would be 3x minus x squared minus the y of the line, which is x. This is the entire y, the length of the vertical strip, which will be multiplied to its width, dx. Okay? 
So if we will clear our markings here and go to the next slide, you will see that, that the, that's the integral that, it's, that is to be processed. So the area under the curve is this one. The area under the line is this one. So if you have the two combined, it's the, the area that I have written a while ago. So the integral, so the integral that we are after is the y of the curve, which is 3x minus x squared minus the y of the line, which is x. If you will combine these two in terms of subtraction, this one is the area under the curve, the bigger area, and their area under the straight line, the smaller area. So you have it here. The answer for the bigger area is 3 and 1 third. I'm only referring for this. And the smaller area will be your 2, this one. So you subtract the 2, that would give you 1 and 1 third square units for your area. So in here, it was just uh, processed separately. So the area under the curve and the area under the straight line. The area under the curve, if I will go back to our slide. Oh. I will just clear my drawing. So this is our area actually. So the area for our curve is, we're, we're on the PowerPoint, is actually the area, the bigger area, which is this one. Let me just, okay. the bigger area is this entire thing. This is your bigger area. That's the area under the curve from zero to two. When you subtract the smaller area, this is the smaller area. So the area under the line, that will give you the area that we're trying to find. So in terms of the process of integration, it's the same thing as being straightforward. With it. What I mean with straightforward, you use a simple route. You just uh, draw a vertical element. Since you know you already have the limit 0 to 2 and it's an x, so this should be a dx and this is your y. So y of the curve minus y of the line. That should give you still the same answer. Okay, so let's move on. Now, there are areas which as I have been pointed a while ago, which have inconsistent boundaries. So just like this one, your curve and this line. If you just have one area for this, let's say you just have one strip for this. Since you already know that you will have to start from, let's say, for example, zero to two you want to determine the area between this curve and this line on the interval let's say for example zero x is zero up to x is equal to two if you draw a vertical strip you draw a vertical strip here and you draw a vertical strip here you will have what we call as an inconsistent set of boundaries why your y here the length of the strip would be the y of the curve minus the y of the line, right? What about here on the left? You will have the y of the curve and then another y of the curve. So that's a case of inconsistent boundary. So there ha it has to be fixed. That way, you will not have an incorrect answer. So in that case, you will have two. It is suggested that you can divide the areas you're concerned of into two areas or there's another technique that you can use as well so i will go to the next slide that way that technique will be illustrated by a specific example still talking about this scenario wherein you have what we call as an inconsistent set of boundaries and by the way for this particular example your answer for the area is nine over two so what happens here is that you have y plus 2, so your y plus 2 is uh, minus y squared is actually um, on the left, you have x which is equal to y squared. So this is uh, on the left side and on the right, you have x being equal to y squared 
the curve is the upper boundary, but the line is y equal to x minus 2, which is the lower boundary. And we have, shall I say, a an inconsistent set of boundaries. So to illustrate how you're going to apply correctly the principles of integration in such inconsistent boundaries, you will have another example, but in this case, you have an answer of nine halves, which will illustrate that particular process. This particular example here, let me just clear the markings. Okay, so determine the area enclosed by, so this is your curve, the red one, one half y squared minus three, and the line y equal to x minus one. So you are after this area and you have two boundaries you have separated because in here you have a different set of boundaries. In here you also have a different set of boundaries. But what we do first in this case is we determine the points of intersection of the curve and the line. Now the question is, this is one thing that you should always determine if the limit of integration or the boundary is not set. What you do, you find the point of intersection. How do you find the point of intersection? You simply substitute one equation to another. What do I mean? You can either set or you can either substitute y here, which is equal to x minus 1 in here. So this y should be changed to x minus 1. So meaning this y here will be the quantity x minus 1 squared. So 1 half quantity x minus 1 squared minus 3. The purpose is for you to be able to get the x value. You will be getting two x values because your equation is quadratic. So what do you mean by that? So for example, in here, I will just write it very small so you will see. I will have here x is equal to 1 half times x minus 1. This x minus 1 that I have here squared minus 3. If you will have this expanded and these two, or rather this entire equation is multiplied by two, so you will have a 2x is equal to x minus one squared minus six, so that I will eliminate the one half here. Then I will have this expanded. So I have a 2x being equal to x squared minus 2x plus one minus six. Now you will have a quadratic equation from this because you will have zero being equal to x squared. This one transferred here will be minus 4x and this one, one minus six is minus five. So you are expected to get two x values and those x values are negative one and five. What will you do with this negative one and five? To any of the equations you have here, it may be that of the curve or the line, you substitute these two and you will get a corresponding value for y. Substitute the x's so that you will get the y. Now, these two pairs of coordinates are the points of intersection of this given curve, the red curve, and the line blue, the blue line that we have there. So that's the very first thing that you will determine when you are after areas, and even solids of revolution are next topic. You are to determine the point of intersections of the area concerned if it's not stated or given. So in this case, it's already given. So let's just clear the markings here. So this is uh, the way we do it. So the area is the area of the outer function minus the area of the inner function. What is that? So in this case, you will have to start with, so you could see here that your x would be from negative 1 to 5. Uh, the point of intersection that is, so this is your negative 1, as you can see, this is the negative 1 right here. And you have, to, you have 5, not negative 5. I said negative 5. So this is your 5. For this negative 1 and 5, the y is negative 2 for negative 1 and the y for the 5 is 4, okay? So what happens here, if you, if you notice, is that you have to properly set first the limits of your integration. What would be or what are the units of integration if you use the x? 
coordinate in this case. So in this particular area, if this is, let's say, area A and this is area B, in this particular area, your X is starting from negative 3. This is your negative 3 until negative 1. As you can see, so we have divided our uh, area between the curve and the line into two regions. So the first area is negative 3 to negative 1 if we choose the vertical strip. Okay? Area 2 will be from negative 1 to 5. So you can see here it's negative 1 to 5. It's still using the vertical strip. Why? Because we're talking about x boundaries so the negative 3 and the negative 1 is an x boundary so this should be a dx and the negative 1 to 5 is an x boundary as well so this is your y and this is your y so the same principle applies as what we have done in the previous example so for this area you will have the y of the curve what is the y of the curve? So this is our curve, by the way. So you have to rewrite this in the form of a y equation. So what you can do is transfer the 3 here. So you have an x plus 3 equal to 1 half y squared. Transfer the 2 there. So that would be a 2x plus 6 equal to y squared. And since you only want the y, it's the y, this y here. So the y is the square root of 2x plus 6. So this is the square root of 2x plus 6 that you are seeing. So the y of the curve, which is positive because it's above the x-axis, minus the y of the same curve, but this time it's written as negative. So you see, this is the y of the curve, which is positive. This is the y of the curve, which is negative. Why? Because it's written below the x-axis, or rather it's under the x-axis. So instead of having a y minus y, which will make it zero, you have a y minus minus y, because we're talking about the same curve. So you have this. A, a y minus minus y will be, it's just like you have two y. So two square root of two x plus six, that would be for this area. For this area, it's consistent to be the y of the curve minus the y of the line. So the y of the curve is square root of 2x plus 6. The y of the line is x minus 1. Okay, we have a different set of interval here or limits than this one. Then you process your integration. So you process the integral here. And your answer will be 18 square units. So you have divided the said area. So you have divided the said area, uh, original area into two areas and added the two. So that is if you will use the um, vertical strip. You can also use the horizontal strip in this case. So if you use the horizontal strip, it would be something like this. And you have to check whether you will have a consistent set of boundaries for this one. So whether you're here, you will have a curve and a line. Whether you're here, you have a curve and a line. Whether you're here, you have a curve and a line. So what you do, you start with the rightmost equation. That would be your x minus 1. And then you subtract the leftmost equation. And since this is already dy and you have here an x, this is another procedure, by the way, huh? but this could be used also. So your, your area here will be x dy. However, your um, limits will be different. Since this is dy, you'll be using the y boundary. So that would be from negative 2 here to what is this? That would be 4. The two answers should agree. Whether you use a vertical strip in which you have two areas or you use a horizontal strip wherein you have only one area to talk about. Okay? So your answer in this case would be 18. So let's clear the drawings. Now let's proceed. Okay, so you have here the illustration of what I have mentioned a while ago. So you have used here, in this case, the horizontal strip. So let me annotate. 
they have used the horizontal strip. And this is a dy, and this is an x. Your limits this time is negative 2 and 4, just like what I have mentioned in the previous slide. You should be getting the same answer. Now, if you notice, the second procedure is a lot easier than the first. It's less confusing. No? As long as you understand the principle of how you determine the area based on the strip that you have chosen, you won't go wrong. So whether you use this process or you use the previous one, that would still be giving the same answer as long as the, as the principle is correctly applied. So just uh, make sure that your boundaries are appropriate to the element that you have chosen. So in here, you have already dy, so your boundary should be negative 2 to 4. In the previous slide, in the previous slide, you have this, the dx. So you will have two sets of areas because the x here is from negative 3 to negative 1. The x here will be from negative 1 to 5, but still giving you the same answer, okay? Now we'll go to the areas between two curves. So actually we have in the first uh, uh, first two examples, or rather four, five, six, in the first three examples on areas between two functions, the function that we're talking about is a curve and a line. Now this time we have really curves. So the area that we have here is the area of the outer function. This is or the uppermost function if you have a vertical element minus the lowermost function. Okay, if you have a vertical element, if it's a horizontal element, the the shall I say the x of the rightmost function minus the x of the leftmost function. If it's vertical element, the y of the upper function minus the y of the lower function. Okay, so in here you have y1 minus y2 dx. In here you have x1 minus x2 dy. The limits are dependent on the differential element orientation. So if it's horizontal, it should be a dy. And as such, it would be starting from c to d. In this case, if it's a vertical element, then it should be a dx, so it would be starting from A to B. Okay, that ha that's how we get the area between two curves. Curves, both are curves. Okay, we can also have this, so upper minus lower. The area of the uh, shade, red shaded region is the function of x minus the g of x on the limit a to b. So in this case, you have chosen a vertical element. Why vertical element? Because the boundary set is an rx boundaries. So your element would be a dx and you have here a y for the length of such an element. Okay, clear? Let me proceed. You can also have this scenario, have this one. So upper minus lower. So in this case, you have function of x minus dx, okay? In this case, a moment away. So it's upper minus lower. So function of x is greater than g of x. And as such, your area, the area that you're after, in this case, this would be the area that we're after, should be the difference between function of x and the g of x integral, okay? In here, you have function of x minus g of x. This one is, since both are under the x-axis, you, you select the uppermost curve, just like if they are above the x-axis, you also choose the upper curve, okay? Now, what about if you have such a thing as this? In here, you have a different scenario. In here, you have a different scenario. Why am I saying that? Because if you choose a vertical element here, you have a vertical element here, and a vertical element here, and a vertical element here, all having dx, 
it's vertical because what you know here as the boundaries are all x you can see this these are x values so it should be a dx on the left side here or in section one or in part one you will have this one is gx minus f of x but in section two that would be function of x minus g of x in section three that would be g of x minus function of x so they have only sections one and three have the same uh, boundaries or rather the same manner of subtracting the equations of the functions but two is different than them so in that case you have no choice but to really separate the three areas the computation of the three areas of the three sections then get the sum so i will clear the drawings first or the markings <clears throat> excuse me and let's see how you're going to process this one so you have to solve for three separate areas with regions one and three or sections one and three having the same manner of subtracting the equation of the functions okay so here for the area uh, from the region from region one so you have a to c sub one so a to c sub one then it should be g of x this is g of x minus f of x in the second region you have from c sub one to c sub two it should be function of x because this one is function of x minus g of x on section three that would be from c sub two to b that would be g of x minus f of x so these two have the same okay same manner of subtracting the equations of the functions the thing is we cannot combine them because they have different limits so let's go to example a to find the area bounded by the functions y equal to 4 over x y equal to x and the vertical lines x equal to 3 and x equal to 1. So this is your you have to really be good in drawing that way you will have a clear picture of the area that you're after. So let's uh, have step two. So draw a good diagram. So this is your diagram. This is your line. Let me annotate. So this is your line y equal to x. This is your curve y equal to 4 over x. This is same curve here. So you are to find the area bounded by this function, this and this line and the verticals one and three so you have it here if this is line x equal to one and x equal to three this is your line y is equal to x and this is your curve four over x the areas that we're after constitute these two different regions one has different boundaries the other one has also different boundaries boundaries in terms of the limits of integration because this one is from one to two and this one is from two to three another one is different boundaries in the manner in which we subtract the equation of the function the left section would have f of x minus g of x the right section will have g of x minus f of x now to illustrate what i mean that would be present here on the next slide can see that here on the next slide so this is what i mean so you have from one to two you have four over x minus x from two to three you have x minus four of x okay and you will just have to process the integrals substitute the limits and then get the area so it's 2.15 square units so what is this 4 over x minus x on the region 1 to 2? This is it. 4 over x is your function of x minus x on the region 1 to 2 plus uh, on the region 2 to 3, meaning our limits of integration is from 2 to 3, our function would be x minus 4 over x. You can see it here x minus 4 of x okay 
Now, example nine. So find the area between the function negative x squared plus 4x plus 3 and above g of x equal to negative x cubed plus 7x squared minus 10x plus 5 over the interval 1 to 2. Now, let me annotate. It's very simple actually. Once you have drawn the curve correctly, <clears throat> this is your function of x and this is your g of x. The region is from 1 to 2. So you can see this is 1 and 2. You have function of x and you have g of x. It's just like choose a vertical, sorry, you choose a vertical element because your boundary set or specified is an x. So you should have the dx and you should have a y. The y that you will have or the length of your strip will be the y of the upper curve, which is your function of x minus the y of the lower curve. And this is it here that you could see. Okay, so it's just like getting the area, the entire area of the upper curve, subtracting the area of the lower curve gives you the middlemost area or the area between the two curves. So it's just like this minus this, as you can see here, will give you this one. Okay, let's proceed. So if we continue, we just have to substitute our equation. So we just copy. So copy and this, and it will give you a 49 over 12. Okay? Then find the area between function of x equal to this one. So your function of x, uh, x squared plus 4x is this, and then the g of x will be x squared minus 6x plus 5. So let me annotate. So this is your uh, function of x, and this is your g of x. What was done here is the intersection between the two, this one is y, this is also y. So these two y's have to be equal in their points of intersection. So the two were equated to get the value of the point of intersection for the x. And this one is that. The one that I have encircled has this as the x-coordinate. So this is the x-coordinate here, the one in asterisk. Okay? When you know the x-coordinate, you substitute it on any of these two equations to be able to get the y. That would be the point of intersection of this point, which has the asterisk. Okay? Okay, clear. Then we move on. So you have x squared minus 6x plus 5. Uh, that's on 0 to a. So from 0, this is 0 to A, the point of intersection or the X coordinate of the point of intersection was set to be A. So setting X equal to A, here you will have in this left section uh, X squared minus 6X plus 5 minus X squared minus 4X. Um, by the way, maybe a while ago, I have interchanged it. So in this case, the upper portion is the g of x. g of x because it was written first here. x squared minus 6x plus 5. Okay. And then the lower curve is the negative x squared plus 4. So if it's the left section that we are accounting for the area, this, would, this is how it should be written. On the right section, it would be the other way around. The negative x squared plus 4x minus this one in here. Then if you integrate, this will be the answer. Now, notice, notice that in here, you have a different set of limits. It's 0 to a, the x coordinate of the point of intersection. And this one is a to 1, the x coordinate of the point of intersection to 1. Why it's ending in 1? because we end here until one, okay? It's only from zero to one. So we just determine the area of the left 
and the right sections. Okay? Now, for, for our 11th example, this one will have the same scenario as this one, uh, wherein you have three sections. Let me illustrate. This one. So a specific example on this particular scenario. So you have this. Determine the area bounded by the line y equal to 2x squared plus 10. So that's the actually uh, the curve. And the line y equal to 4x plus 16. This is the blue line. On the interval negative, one, negative 2 to 5. So we know that the interval set is x, then we, our strip would be vertical and it should be dx. So we'll have this area to account for, this area to account for, and this area to account for having different boundaries. The first area will have negative one to negative, negative two rather to negative one. The second area will have negative one to three. And the third area will be from three to five, okay? How did you know or how are we able to get these values and these values? Just like sample number 10, the values of the x in these two points here will be uh, determined by, e by substituting one equation here to another. So meaning, or you can equate the y here to the y in here. So 2x squared plus 10 should be equated to 4x plus 16. That should give you an x value which will give you also the y. That would give you two x values, meaning you're expected to also get two y values from any of these two equations after you substitute, okay? Now, in the leftmost portion here, you have two x squared plus 10, the upper curve minus the line. So you have minus four x plus 16. On the middle most section here, you have the line four x plus 16, minus the equation of the curve. On the rightmost section, you have the, the curve, uh, which is 2x squared plus 10 minus the line, which is 4x plus 16. So that would be minus 6. This is already simplified form. So notice, be very careful to see that you have different limits here. Now, giving you in this 11th example, the area the sum of their areas of these three sections, illustrating the areas between the curve and the line uh, to be 142 over 3. So it's the sum of three sections. Okay, last sample is this one, two curves again on the interval 0 to pi over 2. So the first one is y equal to sine x, the blue curve, and the red curve, which is y equal to cosine of x. So how do you get the point of intersection? So equate the two, this is cosine of x. So equate the two, you will have a point of intersection, which is uh, pi over four. So they are intersecting here. Okay, that's, sorry, that's the point of intersection in this case, which is pi over four. So you start with determining the area on the left section so 0 to pi over 4 and the area on the right section which is pi over 4 to pi over 2 then get the sum of the two areas okay you also use a vertical element here because the specified interval is an x interval or the specified boundary is an x coordinate so then you will have to choose the vertical element so I think that 12 examples would suffice as to how you determine the areas between a curve and an axis, a curve and a line, and between curves, applying the principle of the definite integral. So feel free to ask me questions once this is uploaded if there are portions here in the discussion which is not clear to you. So after this, I will be also recording for the uh, solids of revolutions, the volume of the solids of uh, revolution. So that's it for now, class. Bye.